Hello everybody and welcome back to Well Around Sports. I'm your host, JJ Senso, and in today's episode, I'm going to be giving you my NBA play-in tournament predictions. Cue the intro. So starting off, we're going to go on the west side of the playoffs. As you know, the NBA playoffs are here. They start tomorrow, and of course, the play-in tournament is semi-new. It started last year, and now we are here in 2023. So today, I'm going to start with the west side of the conference. You got the seven seed Lakers versus the eight seed Timberwolves. And I'm going to go through each player's, each team's top players and their strengths, weaknesses. So for the Lakers, of course, their top players, you got LeBron, AD, Austin Reeves is an emerging star. You got D'Angelo Russell, who they picked up in a trade midway through the year from the Timberwolves, which should be interesting. The weakness is really just they lack bench quality because outside of their starting five, their bench isn't that good. I mean, honestly, the best player off the bench is debatably Malik Beasley. Don't have a whole lot of bench quality. Now, when you look at the Timberwolves, their top players, you got Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert. Their weakness, though, outside shooting is very not good in Minnesota. Also, they lost J Jaden McDaniels for the rest of the season, and they're going to be out. Rudy Gobert is going to be out this game due to a suspension, of course, last night. Got into it, or a couple nights ago, got into a heated, heated yelling match with Kyle Anderson. Did not look friendly, but honestly, this game, I'm going to pick the Lakers simply because they lost, the Timberwolves lost Jaden McDaniels and Rudy Gobert's also out with suspension. So I think the Lakers will win just because of LeBron and AD being too much for the Timberwolves players. Now moving on to the Eastern side, we have the seven seed Miami Heat. First is the eight seed Atlanta Hawks. So at the Heat, their top players, you got Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo. And then the weakness, they really do lack consistent three-point shooting. They're, they're hoping on players like Max Strews, um, Kevin Love, Tyler Hero to make their threes. But they're really not consistent. And then they also lack perimeter defense outside of Jimmy Butler. But I think they just lack perimeter defense. Now, for the Hawks' top players, you got Trey Young, Clint Capella, DeJounte Murray, and John Collins. I think DeJounte Murray could definitely take over this series whenever he comes in uh, to face the backups and he plays a lot of the sixth-man type role almost. He will most likely start this game, but I could see him being on the bench providing some help for the backups. I think he would be a huge player, but the weakness is really just defense overall. They're not a quick team, really, and they... They generate a lot of turnovers, especially Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. So for that reason, I'm going to say the Heat will win due to their defense and their experience with Jimmy Butler, Kevin Love, Bam Adebayo. These players do have a lot of experience. The Hawks, not so much. Now for the Western side, you have the 9 seed Pelicans versus the 10 seed Thunder. Now the Pelicans top players really only have two. I mean, you have Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum for sure, the top two top players. And then you also have Jonas Valanciunas, who I will throw in there. He's a very solid center in the NBA. Their weakness really, though, is their experience in the playoffs. And they're really not a good passing team. Nobody on this team averages over six assists per game. I believe Brandon Ingram is the highest with 5.8. So technically isn't six assists per game. Really not a solid passing team. They are solid at shooting. Solid Thunder, their two top players, you have SGA, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Josh Giddy. Two guards, their guard play is very, very solid, but what they do lack is a big man, but that also results in them being a super fast team, being able to break out in transitions, as they do have the fourth highest transition points in the NBA this year, which could be a very important thing in, of course, another weakness is inexperience. They lack, lack experience in the playoffs. I don't know if this is true, but I, I don't know if any of their players have playoff experience. Maybe Shea Gildress Alexander from his rookie year. I really can't remember, though, but yeah. Still, though, in this 9-10 matchup, I'm going to pick the Thunder to win, even with their lack of experience. I think the fast pace of the Oklahoma City Thunder will just be too much for the New Orleans Pelicans. If they did have Zion Williamson, I think they win this game just because of their physicality. But due to him not playing, of course... I'm going to go with the Oklahoma City Thunder and their fast-paced team. Now going on to the east side, you have the 9-seed Raptors versus the 10-seed Bulls. Starting off with the Raptors, their top players are, of course, Pascal Siakam. 
Fred Van Vliet, OJ Onanobi, and Scotty Barnes. Their strengths are defense, their overall ability as a team. They're very solid from the starting lineup to the bench. Not too, too much is lost, but they also have a big strength and length. They are a very, very long team from Pascal Siakam to OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, Precious Achiwe. And then the weakness, three-point shooting is very not solid here outside of Fred, Fred Van Vliet. Gary Trent Jr. is a solid player for three-point shooting, and they really don't have that much bench depth outside of Precious Achiwe and Gary Trent Jr. Not the best bench there in Toronto. Now looking at the Bulls, their top players, you do have DeRozan, Levine, Vucevic. They're big three there in Chicago. A very solid big three, if I'm being honest. And their strengths, I think this is a top three defense. When you have those three players, Vucevic, of course, being the weakest of those three, but then you also have Patrick Beverly at the one, Alex Caruso at the two. Caruso is a very, very good defensive player. They also do have a very solid bench and experience going on, going along with that bench. You have Ayo De, Ayo De Sanmu. There's a lot of solid players. I mean, Williams, Patrick Williams. This is a very, very solid Chicago Bulls team. The weakness, though. I will say rebounding, they don't have a lot of big rebounders outside of Vucevic. DeRozan could probably get a solid amount of rebounds. And their playmaking ability is also a weakness. Not so many playmakers on this team. This team really does like to ISO. And of course, that also has to come from the head coach, Billy Donovan, who I view as a very, very bad coach. I do not like Billy Donovan whatsoever. I do not think he's a good head coach, but... Despite that, I still think the Bulls will win this matchup due to their defense and experience. I think the Raptors lacking a little bit of experience. And I think Nick Nurse could potentially be on the hot seat this offseason as he really hasn't done much since that year he had Kawhi. That was really the one great year that he's had as a head coach there. Now moving on to the Second round of the play-ins, I guess. You have the 8th seed Timberwolves versus the 10th seed Thunder. And I think the Timberwolves will win this matchup simply because of their experience. And they do get the big men back in Rudy Gobert. I think it will just be too much for the Thunder due to their lack of experience and the lack of a big man. I think the Timberwolves will win this matchup and become the 8th seed in the West. Now on the East side, you have the 8th seed Hawks versus the 10th seed Bulls. And I have the Chicago Bulls winning this simply because they will cause too many turnovers because of their defense. Like I said, I already praised the Bulls defense a lot. And I kind of didn't praise the Hawks as much because of their a lot of turnovers coming from that offense. Whether if it's Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, John Collins, Bogdan Bogdanovich. I mean, this team just creates a ton of turnovers. Even Clint Capella. I just don't think it's a very solid team. So... After the play-in tournament, I think on the West, you're going to end up with the 7 and 8 staying the same. I think the 7th seed will be the Lakers, and the 8th seed will be the Minnesota Timberwolves. However, on the East, you'll still have the 7th seed being the Heat. And then on the 8th seed, I think the Bulls will win. Coming in at the lowest in the play-in tournament, I don't think anybody's picking them to win the play-in play tournament and go to the 8th seed. But I, I think the Bulls have a very good shot at becoming the 8th seed in the East. But let me know down in the comments, guys, what you think about the play-in tournament. I will also have my full play -in, playoff predictions as well as I will show you on my NBA ESPN app my bracket that I am going to make. But without further ado, it's been All Around Sports. I'm your host, Jacinto, guys, and I hope you have an amazing day. Hey.